he's smart enough to know that he can get millions of pounds by milk milking it. Do you know what I mean? But I don't think he's the same fighter, uh, Bernard. Uh, Anthony Joshua milks it as well because yeah, he does. Yeah. Yeah, well, Joshua's. Who, who was he really? Be is be uh, Povetkin. He he, he were uh, thirty nine. Poole left's thirty nine. He fights him next. Who else has he beat? They're all old men, aren't they? Who is fighting? Absolutely, and all um, bombs as well because um, Josh. Uh, no, what's his name? Martin. Your man Martin uh, took a dive after the first or second round. <laughs> yeah, he did, didn't he? Yeah. Now, you you mentioned about Dillian White, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you're, a bit, you're a Dillian White fan, aren't you? Well, I'm going to touch on this, um, yeah. but you go for head first. Oh, right, well, Dillian White, you do know he knocked two eliminators back against Ortez and Brazil and Pulev. You do know that, don't you? No, I never knew that. Um, yeah. What I was going to say was, um, how come the point where Ruiz didn't get made? Both of them said the same excuse. Oh, you don't want none of this smoke. No, right. Dillian White knocked Ortez back twice in 2018, right? He could have had the Pulev fight, and Yui fought Pulev. Right? He could have had that fight. That's why they went down the rankings. Yui beat Sexton and ended up number four in IBF. So what they do is they go down the rankings. They go one, two, three, and then they go four. Now, if one and two are empty and number three is Pulev, and he knocks it back, they go to number four. And that's how Yui ended up going to Bulgaria. That's, that's how we went to Bulgaria. And Yui obviously got cut early, didn't it? And it was a bit of a disaster after that, wasn't it? But the point I want to make is Dillian White could have gone to Bulgaria. The point I'm making is this. I don't want to hear Dillian White going on about, oh, he wants a world title fight and nobody wants to fight him. Because he's, he's not... To get a world title fight, you've got to go through eliminators. Tyson had eliminators to get to Vladimir. That's what you have to do, Bernard. Now, Dillian White's knocked back Ortiz twice, Dominic Brazil, Pulev, and then when he did, and if he'd have won them, he'd have got his world title fight. But then when he did get the chance to fight Joshua for four belts at Wembley, what did he do? He went and fought, was it Oscar Rivers? But that wasn't 100% when he fought Joshua. I think it was a shoulder problem or something like that. No, I'm on about the Wembley fight. He's just knocked... A fight back last year at Wembley, didn't it? Dillian White with Joshua for world title. Yeah, but um, let me touch on what you said a minute ago. You said he had the chance to face um, Pulev. Yeah. Would be Pulev, my opinion. Yeah, well, why didn't he go beat him in Bulgaria then? Well, I, I agree with you. You know, he should have, absolutely. Pulev's team won the purse bid. They beat Eddie Earn for the purse bid. And uh, he pulled out then, Dillian White. So the purse bid went again, and it was $1.6 million. Obviously, 25% of that went to Yui. And Yui fought him in Bulgaria. A young lad like Yui Fury going over to Bulgaria, age 24. Going to Bulgaria. Yeah, to respect Yui, he has big balls, I tell you that. Yeah, you got to give him his respect. He went over there. Obviously, he got cut against Martin Bacoli in gym. And uh, they rolled dice, didn't they? So, uh, and you know what? All these people digging Yui out and they giving me grief because I'm backing him. It's me pal's lad, isn't he? But you've got to look at the facts. He's just turned 25. He's been beat by Parker, but people said he won. But in record books, it's a loss. So I call it a loss, but I thought he beat Parker. The other one's uh, Pool F. He got cut in the second round. Referee said... Uh, if he gets any worse, I'm going to stop it. So, referee were on Peter's, Peter's case. And the third defeat were Povetkin, who was a former world champion. And he just old man Dewey, didn't he? I felt. I felt he, he just had too much experience. So, Dewey's got three defeats, but he'll come, he'll come again. And he's had an hand injury for a couple of years. Now... Steroids. Who were taking steroids? The Russian guy. Oh, Povetkin. Yeah, he's been done twice, hasn't he? You know, which is sad because one of the points I want to touch on is um, deaths in boxing and pads. Yeah. Um, I think it's a 
at an old age, you know, should we have a kind of limit that um, you look at how old um, that fighter is, uh, the boogeyman that no one, no one wanted to fight with. Ortiz. Ortiz. So you look at Ortiz, right? He's a 50 year old or thereabouts man. Should we not draw the limit a little bit closer, like 40 or 45 or thereabouts? Um, because as I said, we're using pads and we have had deaths in the ring. Yeah, I understand that, but Ortiz's birth certificate's been seen by people that we know and he's 40 year old, so I don't know where all this 50 year old thing comes from. Hmm, it's funny well, that. I didn't hear his exact age, I just heard jokes that he was 50 plus. No, he's, 40, he's 41 I think in March. He should. He is past it now, like. But if you remember, Eddie Hearn signed Otis when he was the WBA interim champion, and everybody said, "Oh, Eddie signed WBA interim champion. He's bound to upgrade him to regular champion." And what he did, he parked him up, didn't he? <laughs> Kept. Russell, can I just say, yeah. agree with you on something? Yeah. You said that why he had the opportunity to face Pulev, yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Well, if Eddie Hearn signed um, Ortiz, why could have fought Ortiz? Because that probably would have been easy to make because um, Eddie uh, was the manager of both of them. Well, Ortiz fought on the same card as Dillian White when he fought Chisora. Ortiz fought Dave Allen and Joshua fought Molina all on the same show, so you tell me. It could, like, what I'm saying is, it could be that fight, it could have been even his next fight. When have you ever heard Dillian White mention horses as name? He don't even dream it. None of them. None of them. Do you know that? None. You know none of them when they go to bed at night. The last thing they see on that pillar is horses. Trust me. Joshua, Dillian White, Ergovic, all the Mediern fighters. He's got twelve out of the top twenty-five. None of them twelve mention Luis Ortiz's name. A very skillful Southpaw Olympian, two time Olympian, I believe, Cuban. They don't mention his name. There's only one person from Matchroom that's fought him, and that's Dave Allen from Cunnisborough. He's the only person, and he smashed Dave to bits. He was peeing blood, all his tongue were flapping. So you've got to take your hat off to Dave Allen for getting in there with him. Absolutely. started with career but you got a couple of losses but since I'm being negative let me be positive as you said he jumped in the ring with somebody that didn't want to um, like as you said all these words could have jumped in with Ortiz but he didn't and he did so big props to him yeah and you know what them people have got to look in the mirror at night the ones that put Dave Allen in with Luis Ortiz they should look in the mirror and look at, look at themselves and say did I really look after Dave Allen because don't forget Dave Allen turned pro with us didn't he with Dennis right he turned pro with Dennis Hobson and he left at 6 and 0 in a draw do you think Dennis would have let him go in with Ortiz when he were 9 and 0 or were he 9 and 1 you know, or something I, I go back to that, that the best should fight the best so yeah he should have put him in the ring yeah but Dave Allen weren't ready for Ortiz what are you he, he, he would probably he'd be ready for him probably next year or something he, Dave Allen wasn't ready for him three, three, four years ago. What he ought is, he wasn't ready then. Do you know what neither I mean? Was, neither was Anthony Yard ready for Kovalev. No, he won't. No, he won't. We just you know, ordered it. Somebody ordered me a pizza, which I'm confused about because somebody was ringing me phone while we were talking, and I was like, "Who's this?" And um, I go down, and he says, "Bernard." I said, "What?" He had a pizza link, and uh, obviously someone bought me a pizza. Whereabouts in Dublin do you live? Um, I'm originally from Coolock on the north side, but now I'm living over the south side. Uh, I've never been to uh, Ireland. You know, I enjoyed it, and that's one thing I love is like, you know, the people and the girls. 
Because the girls are beautiful, but the people they grew up with, that's what I love. The beer is cheap, the smokes is cheap, the food is cheap, everything is good. We're in England? Yeah. Why is it dear where you live, uh, beer and stuff like that? Absolutely, like, you know, um, there's one place called Temple Bar, you get a point for seven euro and fifty cent. Now, four beers would be, what, price of 30 euro. You get a train of beer for that price. Jesus. So dear that, isn't it? A lot of money that in it for a pint of beer. It's all about the money which we were discussing. So let's keep talking about the money. Um, before we talk about Conor Weddy versus Mayweather or Pacquiao, because we're, we're talking about money, what did you think about Conor versus Mayweather? I thought it was a circus. You've, you've got me trolling me there, mate. Aren't you? You're telling me Conor McGregor were out boxing Floyd? No, because uh, Conor, uh, Conor, okay, I said it like this. This is my response to this, right? Conor, uh, of all the opponents that Mayweather has fought, Conor had landed the most punches on him. Uh, is Conor from your town, Dublin, then, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So you're going to back you're gonna back him, aren't you? Well, look, the way I looked at it, he never won a round. And Mayweather could have took him out at any time he wanted. I thought he carried him just to keep crowd happy. No, you know, I can kind of agree with you. Like, he, he took the L, he got knocked out, etc. I can give you that. Um, but, like, you know, we have to give some sort of prop that. Like yeah. I said, that's not me saying that he landed the most punches out of the 50 opponents that Mayweather has fought. That's a statistic. He got, uh, he got 80 million dollars didn't he for it so he did okay didn't he absolutely and now he brought out the whiskey etc and uh, obviously he earned more money in the UFC and oh has he got his own whiskey line yeah I heard now I don't know it's a fact that um, you heard of Jameson right mm. but I heard there like the brewer is, uh, is making the whiskey is that in Ireland yeah it's in the city centre so Conor McGregor's making his own whiskey Bloody hell. Lucky lad, he's doing well. Not. It's like, you know, I'd rather, you know, own the whiskey like Connor rather than own the loop like um, Fury. Yeah, he's done, uh, he's done well, hasn't he, Connor? He's done well, he should be proud, his, his mum and dad should be proud of him. Absolutely, because he was an electrician earning, what, three, four, even 500 euro and a week or whatever. And now look at him, he doesn't have to, and that's what I respect. Listen, I disrespect that he hit the old man. I disrespect that what he did with the bus come with 40 people. I disrespect throwing the phone, etc. But you have to take your hat off him. He came from nothing, man. He doesn't even have to fight again, whether it's boxing or UFC, and he still mm. is. That guy that he fought overnight would have been man, though, wasn't he? Which, we, oh, the, yeah, that was disgraceful. 40 seconds, come on. Like, you know... Your man, when Connor was landing, your man didn't seem to want to throw back, etc. He just wanted to stand there and take a beat. Yeah. Like, why yeah. didn't you just try grab him, get him to the ground, or even throw back, or do this, or do that? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And, you know, we said about why don't the best fight the best. And, you know, I'm pissed off that Canelo didn't fight um, Billy Joe Saunders and now he's fighting Murata. I believe Murata has one or two losses, I believe that. Who do you believe is the best uh, middleweight in Great Britain? I think Billy. Billy Joe? Yeah. Right, does Billy Joe fight in England? Because my thing is this. Um, Canelo or GGG didn't, um, because even Billy turned up to the press conference and said, good afternoon, you don't want to fight me, etc. So it's not his fault he didn't get the big fights because even when he did get the big fights of um, uh, Lemieux, you know, he outboxed Lemieux and he was showboating in that fight. Um, you know, I believe he could win Golovkin, why not? You know, Golovkin, old man, um, Billy would just, you know, outbox him. Um, not stand there for him to hit like uh, Akhmadaliev, you know, that's what Billy would do. We just box and move, box and move. Yeah. Did you see Akhmadaliev on that undercard on Thursday? Yeah, I watched it, yeah. That was a brilliant performance. Um, 
He said he wanted a rematch. Would you like to see the rematch? Yeah, I would. I liked the Tevin Farm. I like Tevin Farmer's style as well. I think he's a good southpaw. He's got a lot of lateral yes, movement. Sorry, go ahead. He's got a lot of lateral movement, Tevin Farmer. I like that fight with Diaz. I thought that was a good fight. Tevin Farmer, when he was in the corner and your man was trying to box him, throwing combinations, and he was slipping and sliding. I respect him for that. But what he did against Diaz, I do not know. He looked at the clock more than he looked at his opponent. Um, he went for a cast scan after the fight, and the scan came back normal. So there was nothing wrong, basically. Well, what what I like about Tevin Farmer is at one point in his career, he was seven four and one. And when you're seven four and one, if you're a matchmaker and you're trying to match kids, you're gonna put kids in who are, who are like three and four and zero against somebody like that. But if you but you can come a cropper doing that because if you looked at his record seven four and one, you'd think no, oh, he's not gonna go anywhere. He's already lost four out of twelve fights. But he ended up were it thirty four and one and a world champion and that was his fifth defence. Look at the run he's just gone on where he won twenty three fights on trot. That's fantastic that. So it just shows you that the people who they put him in with on that run he went, they were looking at his record thinking he's been beat four times. He, he, they were thought they thought he was gonna end, end up a journeyman, but there's a difference between matchmaking off box rec and matchmaking and actually finding out about somebody and studying them and it's an art in itself. Do you, do you understand? So I think yeah. Tevin Farmer deser deserves a lot of respect for for going on, on that long run because I didn't think he would because I just looked at his record ages ago and I thought oh, 7 and 4 and 1, he's not going to go anywhere. I remember him. And then obviously he ended up a world champion and went on a great run. So well done to him. And I like stories like that. And I hope that our fighter, Josh Whale, who's got 11 defeats, but they quite, could quite easily be five. I hope that Josh goes on a, goes on a long run. Do you know what I mean? Because just because your record's got losses, it doesn't mean to say that you, you, you can be pushed about and B-side all the time. If you knuckle down, you can turn it round. That's a lesson to all your young fighters out there. Yeah, but fair play to Josh and much respect to him um, because when he took the air, they didn't hang his head in shame. He pushed on and got up and fought. And my thing is this, I respect Kevin Farmer because as you said, he has 23 uh, wins in a row or whatever. You know, you got to respect things like that. But um, one of his lads fought the fights, he fought John O'Carroll. No, I don't respect John O'Carroll. Um, Scott Craig is facing John O'Carroll and I believe Scott Craig will win that. How's Scott Quigg headlining? He's not even fought in England for about three years. How is he headlining a show in England? He doesn't sell a ticket and he hadn't fought in England for three years, went to America. How is he headlining him? He got the training with Freddie Roach, which was good. That would have done him wonders, you know. Um, for me as well, when he fought Frampton, he didn't do arm for the four or six rounds. Um, but when he actually did get into the fight, Phantom was looking up the clock, etc. So we should have got into the fight sooner. Who did you have winning that fight? Um, for me, I had Phantom winning that fight. Um, I think Scott got in a little bit too late, but he should have got in earlier and I would have gave it to him. Yeah, I agree with you on that. I had Phantom winning by two rounds, but he started too late quick, didn't he? You know, you can use the excuse, oh, he broke my jaw because you did eventually get into the fight about the 7th, 8th round, so, you know, that's too late because you're running out of time, you should have did it earlier. Yeah. Well, and let me ask you this, another thing for me is, um, Javante Davis, he fought a one-legged fighter who was 40 years old, and he barely got him out of there, he got him out of there with, what, 60 seconds left or something? I think he's an amazing fighter in Tank, Tank Davis, I think he's fantastic. Uh, Crawford. Uh, what's his name? Leo Santa Cruz. Oh, Santa, Cru Santa Cruz. Yeah, that's what I've read on the internet. Well, I don't know, but uh, I thought you were bigger than that. I came across that on Twitter. Oh, well. I don't know. Wait, wait, Joe Joyce and Joseph Parker, uh, Daniel Dubois have been uh, mixed. 
mix with both of those names. Um, what do you see happening there? What, Joseph Parker against Joe Joyce? Yeah, or even Daniel Dubois. I've seen that on Twitter as well. I, I see. What do you think about I the think, I think Joe Joyce... Um, the bar is uh, is worth twenty five quid pay per view. I know I'm harsh on pay per view, but I think that's a great fight. That it's like a proper all all British. It's not a world title fight, but you could say the the world level guys, aren't they? You know, now you'd you'd say that the bar's easily a European champion if he fought some of the Euro level. Joyce had easily win. He's easily Euro level. They're knocking on door at world level, and they're both undefeated. And I think, I think if Frank Warren pulls that off, and Sam Jones, fair play to him, fair play to him. I'm all, I'm all for that. I'd rather see that and know that the money's generated in England than the money be generated in Saudi Arabia, because it's just pure greed that it gets me back up. Pure greed. See, that's like Fury, uh, uh, Fury Wilder. The fifty-fifty fights, aren't they? These are the fights that you should never bet on, because <laughs> they always mess your accumulators up. Because you usually get wrong one. Absolutely. You said that, um, Joyce and Dubois was all British, but um, one thing is all British for me, which I'm upset it didn't happen, and I don't think it will happen. Is Cal Brook versus American? Uh, I think it'll still happen. Dennis don't think it'll happen, but I think it will happen. But it's lost its sparkle now, and it a long time ago. Like me with a packy, it rather than happen in its prime, it happened five years too late. Yeah, but everybody will still buy it, won't they? They'll, they'll sell, they'll 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 promote the promote it to death, won't they? They'll have Dazzo. Sorry, go on. Uh, sorry, I respect that'd be a big fight, yeah, but I don't respect that the two of them will be at the best of what they could have been. Kel Brook, right, he's probably the technically best welterweight this country has ever had since, God knows, so he is that good. Kel Brook, what, well, was that good, but I think he's a spent force now. I think when they put him in with Golovkin, well, what were they thinking? What were Eddie Hearn thinking? I've got a welterweight world champion from Sheffield, Kel Brook. Light bulb moment. I know what I'll do. I'll put him in with a killer middleweight. Two weight divisions up. You move two weight divisions up, but you say, Kel, don't worry if you get beat or you're getting battered. We'll throw towel in and you've always got your belt to fall back on in welterweight division. What? He goes in, gets battered, the throat towel in. He's got one eye socket smashed and the other one half smashed. He then goes in with another killer, but in his own weight division. And he finishes other side eye socket off and takes his belt. And that's it. Do you know what? You know what? All that taking knee stuff and that. I don't... Look, he's in there, isn't he? He's getting thumped by Errol Spence. Biggest punch in welterweight in world boxing, right? He's getting thumped all over by a southpaw. And he was still in that fight, wasn't he, at one point? It's, it were harsh of Tony Bellew to say he quit, but maybe he did quit. But he, he, he took a lot of punishment, and you can get killed in there, can't you? It's an harsh sport. I really feel for Kelbrook, you know, because he's been treated like a dog. He's been badly advised by people around him, and he's been treated poorly by his promoter. I mean, his promoters waffle them into all sorts, and people do anything for money. These promoters are very slick people. Let me tell you, they know every trick in the book with money. Do you, would you trust a boxing promoter? Would I trust a boxer and a promoter? Would you, which boxing promoter would you trust out of all of them? Frank Warren. Frank Warren? Frank Warren. <laughs> oh, Eddie Hearn, definitely. Well, let me tell you this, right? Frank Warren's the biggest payer, right? But they all know the game. They all know the game. All of them. It, it, but, with, uh, well, obviously, one of your best pals is Dennis, isn't it? But if I were a boxer, I don't know. You have to, you're gonna have to. 
I don't know, Eddie Hearn, you'd probably go for Eddie Hearn, wouldn't you, for a profile, but Frank Warren's going to pay you best money. I don't know, really, it's harsh, isn't it? Lou Bella probably, if I were a boxer. I like Lou Bella. I think he's passionate. I think he wears his heart on his sleeve, and I like him, and, you know, he's all right. Boxing promoter, boy. respect um, the UFC, um, Dana White. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, what he done was amazing, because... Zero, and now it's worth six billion. Now it's worth what? Six billion. Is it? Yeah, he's done well, hasn't he? Do you know how he started that company up? He borrowed a couple of million off off a, a gangster from Boston. Cause he's from Boston, isn't he? Dana White. I'm not talking about any, any gangsters, my friend. I don't want to get shot up. <laughs> he's so long at Wikipedia, if you go look. He borrowed some money off somebody and they, they built the company up, didn't they? He ran it. He borrowed the money and ran it for them and they did well. But it's all on Wikipedia. But uh, if you go study the game... Because I was curious about Dana White and I wanted to know how he started and how he built something up like that. But the, what 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 he has done in UFC, Eddie Hearn, Frank Warren, Mick Hennessy, Barry McGuigan, Dennis Hobson, all these, Blue De Bella... Al Aim and all of them, Bob Arum, they should all take a leaf out in his book. And the leaf is, and this is where boxing's got to change to move forward. UFC, everybody fights everybody. If you lose, it doesn't matter. You just you still get another chance. The boxing mentality is if you lose and you and you lose that O and you've had a defeat, you cut it back at Q and you've got to build your way back up. And it's a hard, hard sport to keep. If you lose, you keep. You've got. It's like Dave Allen. He lost against David Price, and then he goes and knocks back big money to fight the bar. He's now got to build him send back up to get a good fight. If he can't get that the bar fight, and and it's wrong. You know, it's wrong. You should just be able to get to that level and stay there. I mean, Derek Chisora, he's at a, a, a certain level, he's probably Euro level, he, he gets beat, but he's always, he never really starts again, he go, always gets big fights. But I just think it's wrong that the mentality is if you get beat, uh, you've got to go to the back at Q. Everybody should fight everybody. And you know, UFC, Dana White makes them all fight each other, doesn't he, Bernard? Absolutely, but um, you touch on Derek Chisora, he's fighting Rusik, and Rusik is a very good guy, so you're yeah, big props to him. Yeah. Because that's what I want to see, not just here and there. I want to see it all the time, just the best fight the best, because as I said at the start, what's the point in watching a 1-50 fight? You know what's going to happen, you know? Yeah. Yeah, you're right, mate, you're exactly right, yeah. When you look at the odds, if I go down here now and look at the odds for the next Eddie Earn show, if you get it on your computer now and it'll show you Kel Brook odds and all the rest of the fighters on the show, go look at their odds. And they can't tell me that the 50 50 fights on all these shows that are coming up, and it's not good. I want to see fights where they're even and, and you go into the fight and you're saying, God, I don't know who's going to. Like Joshua against Ruiz. We all thought it were a 50-50 fight inside it, but it weren't after they got on scales, were it? But before then, it's like Fury Wilder. We all we don't know who's going to win, and I think that's great. And I once had a chat with Dennis about pay-per-view, and, and he said, you know what, Russ, pay-per-view, when it first came out in 1996, it was Frank Bruno against Oliver McCall, the first one. And we were talking about it, and he says, pay-per-view... When he went to HBO offices in New York, he said they sat there, they spoke about it, and they said, pay per view, Bob Arum said, is supposed to be, you know what, Dennis? We just can't miss this fight. It's supposed to be, we can't miss it, because you don't know who's going to win, Bernard. But how many pay per view fights do you watch and you say, do you know what, I don't know who's going to win? How many? Not well, many. I, I think the answer to that question would be, you see less. And you see more bombs for your champions. Um, as you said, that 
the 50 50 is at the best because you can't take your eyes off the screen even if someone in the room is talking to you like shut up will you let me watch this yeah um, and that's the difference you know um yeah. i think if you're going to pay the uh it doesn't matter like you know 20 euro i think sky charge but over in america it's 80 90 dollars if you're going to 